Okay, so we have our mung beans. These are mung beans. They're like, uh, you know when you get sprouts? Mung sprouts. This is what they come from. I'm going to be making something called waddu, which um, I've also called mug in the past. A dry mug, but it's actually waddu. And basically the first step of getting these dried mung beans is to then soak them overnight. So you can see that. And then depending on the weather, you'll drain them and then let them sit for a day or two. I'm probably going to have to do it for two days because it's a bit chilly in Christchurch at the moment. And you also want to sort out the like duds which don't absorb all the moisture. And yeah, I'll show you what these are like tomorrow. So I've just rinsed my mung beans, pulled them into the colander and rinsed them. And I'm going to wrap them into a tea towel and let them sit in a bowl for the next day or two. Just put them into this, I actually just put the tea towel in the bowl that's under here, poured them in, took them out. I've put them back in the colander, I like to do that because I don't want them sitting in damp and mouldering. Um, I'm just going to cover them up. If you can put them somewhere mildly warm, that's good. Our house is not too cold though, so that's good. And yeah, I'm just going to wrap them up like this. We just want them to sprout a little bit. Once they've sprouted, that's when you want to cook them. So I mean, check them today, check them tomorrow. Hopefully by tomorrow they'll be sprouted enough that we can eat them because they're freaking delicious. I'm making a double mixture by the way, so if yours is like not this full, it's not because they haven't absorbed as much water. Like you notice they're a lot, they're a lot more swelled than they were before. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm making a double mixture because I live with two boys and they like to eat everything. And these are delicious and they keep well. So yeah. So it's like, what, yesterday I, I took them out of the water in the morning and let them sit all day and this is now and this is night time. This is kind of where you want them. Um, I'm going to put a bunch of stuff in a pot and I'll show you and tell you what it is in a moment. In my pot I have onion, chilies and garlic. You want about five cloves of garlic. It might seem a bit extreme but a lot of the garlic you get now is imported from China. It's not very strong. My recipe says about four chilies. Now I've put two in because you can always add chili powder later to chop them up small though. And I've also got, the recipe says one medium onion. Now I use half that because I am not massively into onion. But I have doubled my recipe here. So if this looks like the volume is different to yours, that is why. You just want to fry these off for a bit. Now, and a bit of oil, obviously. Now I've just prepared my chilies here. So that is for uh, one mix, it is one teaspoon of ground cumin, half a teaspoon of ground turmeric, one teaspoon of coriander powder, and you also want to have like a half a teaspoon of salt. Again, you can add more salt later, and I usually do, but I'd rather under salt than over, over salt because it's gross. So we're just going to let these dry off, and also I have actually, I sorted through my mung beans. You, you're going to notice there'll be some that haven't swelled up and they're not starting to sprout. They might have shrunk back down again and they're hard. You want to pick them out because they are not going to taste good. They're not going to cook properly either. You can cook unsprouted mung beans. It's just different. It's, it's a different cooking time and coming across a hard little one of those in your cooking is not ideal. So I, I sorted through them and I've uh, given them a rinse and let them drain in my colander again and so once I have once this is fried for another minute or two I'm going to add mung beans and I'm also going to add my spice mix and then I'm also going to add one and a half cups of water or in this case three cups because I have actually doubled my recipe I'm gonna let it cook over a medium heat till all the water has evaporated I'm going to keep checking on it and yeah, stirring it because stirring is good. You can use red chilies if you want. I got the green ones because they were a bit cheaper. I also would usually use a white onion, but I don't currently have one because, you know, I, I forget these things when I go to the supermarket. Because I bought the chilies and I bought the coriander, you know, but no onion. We had purple. Purple's fine. Just an onion. Now I wanted to show you this little device I have as well. This is what I use for cutting garlic. You can use it for other things. I can't really remember what it's called. I got it from Stevens. The product is, it's a Chefin product and it's got this little door here. It also has another door here, which I can't open with one hand. 
but you basically stick your garlic in there and you do this. It might be a little tough depending on how much you put in there though, but it just chops it up and it's awesome because chopping garlic is the bane of my existence. So I've just put my mung beans in there, I'm sticking my spices in, and measuring things out ahead of time saves you a lot of confusion and stuff. It's a smart thing to do. You just want to stir the things through here now, and then we're going to add our water. Now if you use warm or boiled water, it's, it's going to save you some time. If you put cold water on something that's cooking, it just stops that cooking process. You've got to wait for everything to heat up again. It's a real pain in the butt, and I don't think it cooks as well as it, did, it would have if you used warm stuff. It's kind of like when you do risotto, you heat up your stock, you know, it's just basicness, ness, ness, ness. And stirring, getting some of the onions and things a bit visible now. Right, now we're going to add our, well, my three cups of water, but your cup and a half of water. And I've just used water from the hot tap. It is actually kind of hot, but I was going to boil it, but the kettle makes a, a, long, a lot of noise and it's annoying. This will heat back up again anyway. So we're going to leave this once it's kind of simmering again. I'm going to put the lid on because it's just lost a little bit of the heat. Once it's simmering again, I'm going to give it a stir and just keep checking on it until that water has evaporated. So here it is. It's my finished mug. Now, or well, whatever you want to call it. Mug's technically made with the dry mung beans. Now if you look closely, you can see there's a few there which haven't been cooked. Try not to eat them. Again, they were some of those dried ones which never sprouted. I probably could have got them all out, but I'm a bit impatient, so that didn't happen. But they're easy enough to spot, because they're tiny and very, very green compared to the other ones. I like to finish off my wadu with some freshly cut coriander. Now if you don't like coriander, I'm sorry, but you may have a problem there. No, you can still eat it without it, it's, it's not a problem. It's just that fresh coriander is the bomb. And that's it, just have it in a bowl and eat it for your dinner. Like, that's good, it'll last a few days. It's a fairly low calorie meal. It's also delicious, have it with some rotlis or some pori or some bread or some kind of a bready thing if you want to. Or have it on its own. I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. This is my first requested video as such, so yeah, if you try and make this or just watch it, it's really healthy for you. It's really soul foody and delicious. It fills up that void within you and makes you feel good on the inside and the outside. Give it a go. Give it a go and, and try it and let me know what you think. I know it doesn't look the most appetizing thing in the world, but it's delicious. Well, I'll see you guys next week. Give me a like and subscribe or comment below if you want. See you next week. Bye.